everyone welcome back to the second video of molecular basis of inheritance in this video we're gonna see the topic the search for genetic material and what are the different experiments which have taken place in the field of molecular biology for the identification of the genetic material so the first experiment in the field of molecular biology was performed by Griffith now this experiment led the foundation for the discovery of genetic material and this experiment was known as transforming principle now yahan se ek cheez to clear hai the griffith was never interested in search of the genetic material because there was nothing and no experiment which was going in that field that time there was a disease which was very popular known as pneumonia now this disease is caused by streptococcus pneumoniae which is also known as pneumococcus and even it is also known as diplococcus so griffith was basically studying this disease which is pneumonia now when he was studying this disease he found that the patient sample contained two different type of bacterial colonies and he was surprised and when he examined them he found that there are certain colonies which were smooth and the reason this colonies were smooth was the presence of slime layer but in certain colonies there was no presence of slime layer and they appear a bit rough in texture and this was because of the absence of slime layer now this slime layer lead to the naming of that particular bacteria as s3 and another one as r2 now this slime layer is basically responsible for the toxicity now when he was studying this particular disease he found that when he inoculated r2 strand in mice and observed the mice it was alive nothing had happened to the mice which confirmed that r2 strain do not cause any disease but when he inoculated the s3 strain in mice he found the mice was dead and the reason was the presence of slime layer then what he did he heat killed the bacterial sample which lead to the death of the mice that is our s3 strain and inoculated again in mice he found this time the mice was alive now what he did he used that heat killed s3 strain and mix it with the r2 strain and he inoculated both of them that is the s3 strain and the r2 strain in mice he was pretty clear in his mind that the s3 strain which was heat killed and the r2 strain do not cause any disease so the mice should be alive but to his surprise he found that the mice was dead now to explain this thing what he did he checked the body of the mice and he found that there was certain living s3 cells which were present in the mice and there were certain heat kill s3 cells and there were certain r two strands which were present in the mice when griffith closely observed the experiment he found that the r2 strain which was mixed with the heat kill s strain had taken up something from the heat killed s strain which transformed the r2 strain into the s3 strain now this r2 strain now when transformed into s3 strain had grown a slime layer above it which was responsible for the death of mice now from this that there was something in the heat kill s strain which lead to the transformation of bacteria but he was never sure about it that what was there in that particular heat kill sample so this was later proved by three different scientists every macloid 
and McCarty. These three scientists, which are your Avery, McLeod, and McCarty, have taken that heat killed astrine sample and they performed biochemical analysis of transforming principle. That is, they want to know that what is that particular material which was responsible for the transformation of that particular R strain into S strain which made it lethal. So they have taken three different test tubes and all the three different test tubes they have kept the heat killed S strain sample and label all the three different test tubes. Now if we observe all the three different test tubes we will find that all the three different test tubes contain DNA, RNA and protein in that sample. Now what they have done that in three different test tube they have added three different enzymes. For example in first test tube they have added proteinase, in second they have added RNAs and in the third one they have added DNAs. Now obvious thing is that that proteinase जो हम लोगों ने add किया है यह आपका क्या करेगा sample A जो है हमारा उसमें से protein को finish कर देगा. Now, in sam if we talk about sample B, what will happen? It will finish RNA, so they, it will contain only DNA and protein. And in sample 3, it will only have RNA and protein. Now, what they have done, they have leveled them as A, B and C. And now they have inoculated R2 strain bacteria in all the three different test tubes. Now the concept was simple, if this R2 strain bacteria is transformed by protein, so in A there will be no transformation, if it is transformed by RNA there will be no transformation in B and if it is transformed by DNA there will be no transformation in C test tube. Now what they have done, they have inoculated samples from all the three test tubes into mice and once it was incubated for a particular period of time they have start observing the mice sample that they are alive or dead. What they have found ki test tube A mice was dead, test tube B mice was dead but in case of test tube C the mice was alive which clearly indicate that the protein was not the transforming element in case of R2 strain because protein was missing and still the mice was dead. In case of test tube B we see only DNA and protein is present so RNA is missing and still the mice was dead. If we see sample C only protein and RNA was there so the R strain was not transformed and the mice was alive. So if we observe the entire experiment we will find that Mavery, McLeod and McCarty have said that the DNA is the transforming element due to which in test tube C the R strain was not transformed into S strain and the mice was alive. But this theory was opposed by different scientists and they didn't agree with the fact that the DNA is the transforming element. So finally the fact that DNA is the genetic material is proved by Hersey and Chase which we will be seeing in our next video along with semi-conservative mode of replication. Thank you. And keep watching Botany Blaze for upcoming molecular biology lectures.